art hack for rooms. <laughs> I hate art hacks. There's no such thing as a shortcut or a hack to get you ahead. Please get it together, guys. Please, guys. Yes. No. What's up, guys? Welcome back. It's a beautiful day today, and what better way to spend a beautiful day than to look at art tips on TikTok? But before we get started, our village is getting fed. This video is sponsored by Micro Center. Micro Center has computers and other tech that fits all of your creative needs, whether you're an animator who needs a powerful big boy PC, or you're just somebody who wants to casually edit some photos on a more basic PC. And they have a new lineup of business solutions, including Dell and Super Micro. So I'm gonna link all of that in the description below. They also have a selection of cameras and tablets if you wanna be like me and do all this. You'll find the best prices and deals both online and in store at Micro Center. And they also have the most friendly and knowledgeable associates to make sure that you get the right products for your needs. And for a fee, they can even help you build a PC in store. Whether you're completely new to it or you're familiar with building computers, Micro Center is here for you. And to top it all off, Micro Center wants to give new customers a free 128 gigabyte USB flash drive and a free 128 gigabyte micro SD card. Limited time offer, check out the link in my description. And thank you once again to Micro Center for sponsoring this video and feeding my village. Okay, let's do it. We gotta make sure the information out there is safe for the babies. Okay, let's go. First up, we got quick background painting tip that feels illegal, but isn't. Quick background painting tip that feels illegal, but isn't. Say, you really want to paint this epic perspective you have in your mind but whenever you start from scratch you miss the proportions and stuff just make no sense one thing that you can do to cheat the system is to find a photo with the perspective you like copy paste into your program and paint on top of it first you will put down the guidelines of the perspective because you already have the image disclaimer i'm not telling you to copy the photo i'm saying use the photo as your guide for your own design to practice your creativity or the understanding of how perspective works that's actually very good that's a tip that i can get behind for sure uh but let me just say what everybody is thinking that that robot voice <laughs> good lord like guys <sighs> The tip itself is very good though. You should always observe uh, perspectives that you find in references. And a really good way to practice it is to use a reference photo as a base. But I would also recommend looking for the perspective but not necessarily tracing it every single time because then you might become dependent on tracing over a reference. But using it as a way of practice is super good. Uh, so this video gets a one out of 10 because this didn't feel illegal enough for me. Art hacks that must've been kept secret by the FBI. Are we? Are we finding a theme? Is everything in this video just gonna be illegal? But this video is by Sparkit, so I know it's gonna be a good time. Art hacks that I wish somebody told me earlier. I was always told watercolor is permanent. If you mess up, you can't fix it. Well, guess what? You can. Another one, when the vibrant river of my Copic marker ran dry, I thought I had to get a new cartridge. Apparently not, just dump hand sanitizer on it and it's good as new. I wish I knew this sooner. Do you have cheap acrylic paint that doesn't work very well, but you don't want to throw it away? Just heat water and cornstarch until it turns into this thick, goopy consistency. Then just mix a little bit in with your cheaper paint and bam, look at that. More. Hold up, wait a minute. I think it should be illegal to make me question my life that many times in a 30 second video. Guess what? You can't. First of all, you can erase watercolor with Mr. Clean Magic Eraser? Are you kidding me? Boy, if I knew about this when I was a young child, oh. Ooh. Uh, look, I'm sorry, if there was an art tip in this video, I completely missed it because I was mesmerized by the painting. That's such a satisfying process. Yes. <gasps> no. Art tips from someone paying $12,000 to do art good. I'm well, wait a minute. You're calm this time. What is this? Uh, this is character development. I'm happy for you. I need to draw the backside of this character. I need to draw the butt. I need to draw the butt. is just to fucking flip it and then erase everything. Yeah. I literally just complimented you for being calm and now you go around swearing on a family-friendly channel. God, think about the babies. Everything inside. Because even if your character is backwards, the silhouette stays the same. Yep. You know, I can't I can't really say anything about that because that's a valid tip. If you're lazy, you've already drawn a character from the front view, just flip that front view around, erase everything inside, and draw the butt. Literally like why do more work when less work do trick, right? Eight out of ten, you did a good job. Artist controversy, tracing. I love tea, I love drama, I'm here for it. Let's go. Tracing Directly over someone else's teeth. Big no no. Practice with reference. Mimicking shapes is good practice. 
helps with perfection. You this one wasn't good. Won't help develop your own skills. I don't really know what I just watched, but okay, let's go through. Tracing is always such a sensitive issue with artists, but this person is saying, do not trace directly over someone else's piece and definitely don't call it your own. I think that's the most important point, okay? If you're gonna trace someone's work, there's a time and a place for that. If you guys wanna know what's an acceptable way to do it, go check out Ethan Becker's channel. He does a really good version of tracing people's work and breaking down their shapes. But if you're like, I'm gonna trace someone's work and say it's my own and put it on Instagram, don't do that. But yeah, tracing is a sensitive topic and I've personally seen artists trace over my work and put it on their profiles. And then when people ask them about it, they're like, oh no, it wasn't inspired by Sam. There was an original photo reference on Pinterest, but I'm like, bro, all of your lines match up with mine. It is what it is. Anyways, let me just clear this up once and for all. Tracing is okay if you're trying to break down someone's work and learn from it. Do not ever claim a traced piece as your own and always disclose the person you were referencing. Okay, that's pretty simple. Come on guys, come on guys. An art question I get is why blue pencil? Uh, I, I, I wanna know this too, because I jumped onto the blue pencil hype way back in the day and I was like, why am I using blue? I don't know, everyone's using it, so it seems kinda cool. <laughs> blue is a little less intense than black. You can get amazing values like you see here, but then if you overlay it with black, you can get even darker. So if you're scared of the fact that Prismacolor doesn't erase, try using a blue pencil first. You can always overlay other colors and come up with some pretty cool looking stuff. I don't know if that's the reason for it. Is that the reason for it? Okay, I'm not like 100% convinced. If anybody out there who uses blue pencils knows the actual reason for it, please leave it in the comments. I'm gonna give you a five out of 10 for trying your best. Hear me out, I'm not a bad guy. Perhaps I'm kind of a bad guy. That's kind of funny. But let me tell you, if you guys feel like you're pressured into making too many posts, just tone that down a little bit. Give yourself a little bit of time. Give yourself some space. And also you can post whatever you want to post. Who's to say every single new post needs to be a new piece? Art hack for rooms. <laughs> I hate art hacks. Listen kids, art takes years upon years of dedication and determination and hard work. There is no such thing as a shortcut or a hack to get you ahead. With that being said though, let's watch the video. Kind of smart that's actually a good way to figure out an environment if you don't really know how to visualize it but also if you guys do this make sure you're laying down all the perspective lines for the other components in the room as well so when you get to this stage now what i'm seeing in this drawing is perspective lines were not used for the tops of the walls and everything above the horizon line listen the most annoying thing about perspective is everything in your composition has to follow that same perspective okay it's a very technical process but it's very important. So when you get to this stage, perspective lines for everything in the composition. Please, please get it together, guys. Please, guys. But that was a pretty cool little art hack. So I'm gonna give that an eight out of 10. I actually really like that. Six art YouTubers you should know about. Cynics Design is one of my faves. They have a lot of helpful tutorials for intermediate artists. New Tribal has a lot of great vids for people interested in pursuing art or animation as a career. Art with Flow has endless Procreate app tutorials for all those procreators out there Law. Pipe's Art has a lot of traditional work and draw whips. Ahmed Aldori has tips for really getting down to business with drawing and improving. Ethan Becker is also one. He can be sarcastic and harsh. If that's not your thing, don't watch him. No, what do you mean? Ethan is not sarcastic and harsh. He tries his best. So the only channels here that I personally actively follow are Cynics and Ethan. And I think Cynics has some super good videos on like just painting and rendering. And Ethan is just an absolute joy. Such a jolly man, not sarcastic at all. And definitely never brandishes a weapon in any of his videos. He's a very nice guy, go check him out. I love it. Thank you for introducing all the babies to these art YouTubers that they could watch instead of random art tips on TikTok. I'm gonna give this video a one out of 10 because I wasn't in this. How to draw for beginners. Let's go. First, put your pen down and look at your subject for a moment. Drawing is an observational skill. It's not just about the hand. Now, pick up your pen, close one eye, and trace the subject simply by sight, like this. Then, trace the subject once more, but with pen on paper. 
Don't look down. Instead, allow your hand to simply follow your sight, like a mirror. This is called the blind contour line drawing. While your first attempts may come out something like a scribble, the line quality here has a likeness of real life. In my next video, we'll go over how to keep this quality, but straighten out the proportions. Wow, okay, so it's a, it's a cliffhanger. Blind contour line drawings. I remember doing those in school. It's definitely not the end all be all way to practice drawing for beginners, but what it does help with is observing a subject. When you take out the part where you have to look down and check your proportions and your lines and all that, you're able to fully observe whatever object is in front of you and not worry too much about your final result. So observation is the one thing that it helps with the most. And I'm sorry to break it to you guys, but you're gonna eventually still have to look down at that piece of paper and look at the absolute abomination that you've created. Gortober tip for traditional art. Gortober. Use printer paper and markers for blood splats. Oh. Drip. Drip. Man, these traditional artists are so creative. Like, who figured this out? Who figured this out? You know, like pouring hand sanitizer onto your marker, using a paper to create blood splatters, eating your gouache paint. Like, you guys are something else. I'm glad I moved to digital. Eight videos that will change your life. Beginner artist edition. Let's go. I mean, I guess you could pause the video if you want to check all of them out, but maybe next time make the video a little bit longer. Jesus. It's, do the kids nowadays read that fast? You're telling me the kids can understand that? Are you guys living life on two times speed? Like, all right, for those who don't understand like what's going on here when you see like a tutorial like this, what's important is not to do the individual strands, each little thing, which is what a lot of people do when they color hair. Here's my bust. If I just focus on each little strand, this is gonna take all day. What this artist is doing is getting the big shape of what it is first, and she's using like a dark tone, and then she'll get a lighter tone to identify where the highlights and where things are coming from. Then she's working on each individual strand. So if you wanna get good at doing hair, focus on light and form first. Great point. Focus on the big shapes, focus on the main lights and shadows, and then worry about the details. Don't start with the details. But you know what's funny to me? Like, who draws hair like that? Why are you like, don't do this? Who does that? Who does that? Do you do that? If you answered yes to that, I don't know if I can help you. Here's my bust. If I just focus on each little strand. Who does that though? If you actually do that, uh, stop it right now. Right this instant, get it together, okay? Collect yourself, gather yourself. I could tell you all day that you can draw with any metal lying around, but I figured I might as well show you by sculpting this pointy little thing out of aluminum foil. How funny would it be to hang art in a prestigious gallery only for the description to say it was drawn with aluminum foil? You could do that? You could draw with aluminum foil? What? Yo guys, I've been saying traditional artists are something else. What is it about you guys that makes you so creative? Is it actually because you guys consume so much of your paint that you just like hallucinate things and come up with these crazy ideas that we digital artists could just never think of? Because when you eat a tablet, it doesn't really have any hallucinogenic properties. Four steps to draw a frog. I don't know why I would ever want to draw a frog, but just in case I ever do want to draw a frog, let's do it. Oh, wow, yeah, wow, wow. You glossed right over the last step. How do I get the rendering to look like that? <laughs> but no, that's cute. That's cute, I like that. 4.6 million likes. Guys, is that what I gotta do? Do I just need to go on TikTok and teach people how to draw frogs? Anyways, there's another look at some fun art tips on TikTok. I know I forgot to rate like half of them, but you could probably tell how I feel about it through my reaction. Guys, I really do be falling apart at the seams here. I'm just, I'm, I'm, uh. <laughs> no, but you know what? To all of these beautiful creators on TikTok, I appreciate you guys putting out all of your content. You guys are always trying to help the babies and I can see that you guys have the best intentions in mind. So round of applause. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys learned something new from this. If you made it all the way here and you've yet to subscribe to my channel, um, I will personally come there and I'll find you and I'll add you to my collection. But thank you guys so much for being here. I love you all and I'll see you guys on the next video. Testing, 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 testing.
Testing, testing. What's up guys, welcome back. It's a beautiful day today and what better way to spend a beautiful day than to look at our tips on TikTok. 